and welcome to a special blog episode, uh, or vlog, rather. I'm going to be fudging my order a little bit. My original plan was this week to have a my review of the second Legend of Galactic Heroes novel. That review is already in the can and actually already uploaded. I'm going to fudge this a bit because it's a topic I'd like to talk about that I've been thinking about it recently. And that is the topic of snowpocalypses. Snowpocalypse? Snowpocalypse? I don't know. I'm not sure what the plural of apocalypse is. Most people didn't think, haven't thought about the plural of apocalypses because normally you just have one and you start recording after the fact because you had an apocalypse. And thus is the case with Portland, the Portland metro area, with snowpocalypses, rather. Because we've had three in the course of the first, of the last week of January and, or the last week of December, rather, and the first two weeks of January. Actually, they've kind of happened just over two weeks. So, and they've all been slightly different. They've all affected our affairs in ver metro area in various ways. So, let's start with Apocalypse, Snow Apocalypse 1. This one led to me missing an installment of the Console Explosion podcast. I will try to stick a little photograph that I took over the course of, the, of that Snow Apocalypse up over here. And this one, it was only like an inch or three of snow. And this is the kind of snow apocalypse that most people make fun of Portland for getting into problems with. It, oh, it's just three inches. Oh, it's just two or three inches. You guys don't know how to drive in the snow. You all suck. You're a bunch of losers. You, you. I assume the Canadians would be thinking of us as hosers, but except for the fact that they're tend to be more polite and just wouldn't say such things. So... That one was somewhat notable and distinct as far as snowpocalypses, snowpocalypses, yeah, snowpocalypses go, because of the timing of it. Timing is everything, as in comedy, if you've seen High Up at the Comet Butler, they'll tell you, and in everything else. And with some prep, if you get start getting a one to three inches of snowfall early in the day or before the commit gets started, it's fairly easy to get things cleaned up to some degree or another to get things ready so people can drive. You can plow the roads, you can spray the ice around the roads. If you live in a state that salts the roads, you can salt them. In the case of Oregon, we don't salt the roads because there's concern about the salt rusting out the underside of the car, or the salt water rusting out the underside of the car. So instead, we sand, the, sand and gravel the roads to improve traction. And... What happens then is, well, you just go and go through your day and recover. You are still able to get to work, you're still able to get around, and that sort of thing. What that snowpocalypse had the issue of is it came, is it started around 3.30, 3.20-ish, <clears throat> right when the commute is getting started, and it hit hard. Enough that the snow started really accumulating and affecting traction and affecting driving in the middle of the commute. <clears throat> all the plows in the world, all the de-icer in the world, all the sand and gravel in the world will do no good if it can't get to the roads and get things cleared up. And if you already have bumper-to-bumper -bumper gridlock traffic because of cars spinning out, cars losing traction, people trying to get their cars to the shoulder to abandon their cars and proceed on foot, once that starts happening then you're kind of screwed. That's what happened to me. I was, I decided to leave work about 15 minutes early. So I tried to, like, cut the, got on the bus-ish around the beginning of when the snow started falling, and rather I get to the bus stop, and over the course of my getting to the bus stop, the snow started coming down harder, we started getting visual, visible accumulation, and by the time I got on the bus things got bad, and it ultimately took about six hours for me to get to downtown Portland to home, which is funny, because when I checked, tried to plot out my route on my phone, um, before I left, to Google Maps, they, I got an estimated walking time from Google of six hours, so I probably got home about the same time had I walked. Part of the issue with this is TriMet's snow route for their buses, when for the particular bus that I was taking, which is the direct line from Portland through Tualatin, and two points to the south, is it 
goes through Barber Boulevard, which is a very steep hill. And people were getting lots of fog down there, and because it's a higher elevation, snow was coming down harder there, and we had more people ditching and that sort of thing. By the time we got to Tualatin, which is where I just had to get off and hoof it, until I met a, met my ride, I scheduled a ride on the way to the bus, um, before I met my ride, I was actually walking faster than the bus was, and we had a very sig- and we had a significant accumulation, like one or two inches, which is significant for Portland, but it was enough where it was affecting traction and the traffic around was bad enough that bus that you couldn't get get any vehicles around to try to clear the roadways. In order to clear snow off the roadways, you have to have somewhat clear roadways. So there was that. Snowpocalypse two. I have no pictures of this. This one is basically what happens when things mostly go right, sort of. But this is actually kind of closer to what we normally get for a snowpocalypse in the Portland area, which is maybe an inch or two of snow and a boatload of ice. And what happens when you get this is ice weighs down on trees. Ice tends to weigh more than snow for obvious reasons. Limbs start coming down, cutting power to parts of the area, uh, and roads turn into skating rinks. And this is what we normally get in the Portland area, is you get ice. You get lots and lots of ice. And in the Portland area in particular, we have lots of hills, which further affects mobility because snow, you can move stuff out of the way. The Once the plows clear things, theoretically, snows become a little, hills become somewhat more accessible. It's still rough, depending on how steep your gradation of your hill is. If you're something like the hills in Oregon City, where it's like this, or the West Hills, where it's like this, then you're, you're shit out of luck. But if you're in some more gradual hills, like the and Tigered area, where it's kind of like this or like that, you can get around. Uh, but with ice, even those hills become an issue. It's the point where when we get an ice storm or similar things in the Westland Wilsonville School District, which is where I went to high school, they would just shut down school whenever ice was getting up in the higher elevation hills, because that's where a lot of the kids in the district lived, and consequently it became really unsafe for buses, because you can't really take those hills very well. This also affects, by the way, the type of traction devices most people in the Portland area use. Most people go with four-wheel drive, and they go with studded tires, and that normally works. If you have like one or three inches of snow or ice, you get enough traction with those where you can get by. But that brings me to problems with Snowpocalypse 3 we had this past week, which lasted, start, it hit in on Wednesday, and the snow has persisted to today of the recording this, which is the 14th. And I should have a picture of it around over here. This is from the Vancouver area. In Vancouver, they were more aggressive for a date with the icer, and they salt the roads, so their freeways were clear. If you get start getting onto side streets, you then start running into problems. But major thoroughfares and freeways were mostly clear on the Vancouver side of the Columbia, because that's Washington State. And, well, this is the snow of which we don't normally get. And by don't normally get, I mean we got more snow that one, like, that Wednesday... More snow than than we've gotten since 1940. There are parents of children alive today who had not seen snow this substantial before. Or up another way. So yeah, that is kind of a big deal. And we were getting in areas of the Portland area up to 11 inches. And we're not talking like the higher elevations. We're talking the West Hills. We're not talking out over like Oswego or in parts of Tigard or Beaverton, which are higher up. We're talking like, you know, the lower elevations in Portland. We're talking like waterfront areas. So other parts of the country, Michigan, Midwest, they're equipped for this. They have all the plows. They have all the de-icing fluid. They have everything they need to clear out the area quick and easy, 
there are the parts of the country that don't have snow days. Their kids like, oh, having a day off for snow, that'd be kind of cool, but not really the Portland area. And the area shut down. Once again, lots of trees being downed, power uh, trucks going out to um, uh, to store power, trying to plow the major thoroughfares to a varying degree. But even then, pardon my work on my nose, it was cold, I'm kind of stifling a bit. Even then, it's still not 100% working for didn't clear everything. For most of Wednesday, the other thing in Portland is we have lots of bridges. We have, like, I have a poster in the main part of the house, a framed poster, with pictures of all the bridges in the Portland metro area, and we have a lot of them. And a lot of them are fairly high elevation, and, what, and some of them also have fairly solid side, as opposed to, like, somewhat open um, side railings where, theoretically, the snow could just blow off the sides and clear out that way. So they, they're high elevation, they're surrounded by cold air, which means they freeze easy, and they also build up snow on them easy, and that snow doesn't have much of a place to go. So, what happens is those freeze, and at which point you need chains to go over the bridges, especially if you're a semi, and if somebody tries to go over those bridges, as what happened without chains... Especially if you're a truck, you jackknife, you spin out, you then block the bridge, and you back up traffic for freaking ever. And that's what happened with Snowpocalypse 3. And that has had effects lasting through, at the very least, Friday. So what happened Friday also we also have the coldest day we've had in years, with the low of around twelve degrees Fahrenheit. I will let you do the math. Or I'll just put a text box up here or over here somewhere. Probably up here, because I have the picture over here, with what the Celsius conversion is for those of you watching internationally. But either way, it's already well below freezing, and it's, it's been below freezing pretty much all week, but now it's even further below freezing. And what this meant is places that were already frozen, stayed frozen, roads which hadn't really thawed were still, um, the ice persisted. A good example is I-84, where what happened, and that in a lot of places here in Portland areas, when you have snow that sticks around for a while and doesn't get plowed, what, or de-iced and then plowed, what you get is the snow compact. Particularly when it's been a whole bunch of cars and trucks driving over it, is the snow compacts further and further and further, and then when your temperature is constantly below freezing, particularly when you get big, long, no traffic periods overnight, it freezes again, so you get sheets of bumpy ice. Which, when you've been trucks going over it with truck chains, which then tears up a whole bunch of little grooves and divots in the ice, so it makes driving over it like as a Court Weber described on a Facebook video he posted, like driving over a dry, a, uh, dry riverbed. Except it's a slippery dry riverbed because it's ice. So you combine all of this together, and this led to, on Friday, a TriMet Max train, that's our light rail um, service, jumping the tracks over by the worst quarter. This is where we have... or Rose Quarter Moda Center area. This is where the Portland Trailblazers play. And that basically ended up ultimately shutting down light rail service in Portland for most of the day. Or particularly at least the downtown Portland area because of the switches, because of trying to figure out what caused this. and Because it jumped the tracks at a switch and a turn. So there was the question of, okay, is it safe to take the trains through Portland? How are we handling the shuttle buses for this? Because they'd already had significantly reduced bus service in Portland. And various other issues causing a variety of problems. So there's that issue to the mess as well. So, that is our myriad snowpocalypses and how they've affected things throughout the Portland area. So when you crack jokes about 
or should you crack jokes but oh portlanders they don't know the snow they can't handle the snow keep in mind our circumstances the lack of equipment that we have in the area and that because of this and how we handle and how the snow is handled by our lack of infrastructure for this it, it, it causes it's not just oh we don't have the trucks to plow everything it has a whole bunch of other domino ripple effects to combine terminology that affects the rest of the area and affects mobility for most of the area ah <sighs> got that out of my system so now you have learned something about snow in portland and next um, episode of, Inten of Breaking It All Down, which will be first Wednesday of February, we will get back to the Legend of the Galactic Heroes series. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.